couple of quick finals for you in the NBA. Miami eliminates the 76ers, and it looks like Dallas is trying to force a game seven against the Suns. And how about this, Jeff? Toronto three, Tampa three, now in overtime. Toronto, if they win, wow. win the series. If not, it goes back to Toronto for game seven. What's it been since, like, 04 that Toronto's won a playoff? So it's something crazy, yeah. which, I mean, imagine, in, you know, in that hockey environment to go that long before a playoff win. Uh, that's that's pretty insane. It is. And then last night we saw the Caps blow a 3 nothing lead. Florida came back with five. Uh, Carter Verhage has been terrific for them, and we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, let's go back to the lines. we got Mike and Beaver. What's up, Mike? Bob, Jeff, how you guys doing? Good. I originally called way earlier in the series, worried about Sturkin versus Jari. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you would have told me at the beginning of the series that we'd have a 3-2 lead going into game six and you're contemplating starting Louis Domingue over Christian, Tristan Jari, who's completely apparently healthy now, you're crazy. I mean, you're going to be, like you said earlier, I heard your uh, sports call earlier uh, on the fan. Uh, you'll be kicking yourself in the rear end if you don't start, Jari. You have to go with your best best players, or else. Yeah, no you know, I, I mean, I understand Jeff's point here because it's, there's a lot of rust. But I would agree with you and, and respectfully disagree with Jeff here because I think Tristan Jari is your best option. And if even, and I'll do it this way, Jeff. If if I could play him tomorrow, knowing I have a cushion of one more game, but get him into the rhythm, even if he may not be as sharp as he should be. I'll do it that way because I still think he's a better option than Louis Dumais. So if Tristan Jari comes in and knocking that rust off, he gives up five goals. Mm -hmm. Who do you start? Do you, so you go right back to Jari and think, okay, he just knocked the rust off, or do you worry about a guy who struggled in the postseason giving up that? I, I worry all the I, time listen, about Jari's, everything, Jeff. But I, I, listen, I'm going to defer to my best player, and I think that's what he would do probably too. But if he's fully healthy, I'm right. not convinced. Based on what Mike DeFabo saw in morning skate, he said he looked rusty in that morning skate. I, I don't want to see a guy that's not on top of his game starting an elimination game at home. No, I understand that. And that's what, you know, tough decision, but you got to make it, and we'll see what he does tomorrow. Right. Real quick, let's get uh, Fran in Sarver. What's up, Fran? Make it quick, please. Hi, Bob and Jeff. Hi. Um, I think hey, the only way you would counter what I consider intentional violent hit would be if the person injured is out, say, five days, the perpetrator is out five days. Should be. I, don't, I wouldn't disagree with that at all, actually. Yeah. But, Fran, I, the that's only never problem with that, The only problem with that, Fran, is if someone intended to do something really bad and somehow the other player escaped injury, does that mean this guy escapes punishment? That's the only slippery slope with right. that. Right. It is a slippery slope, but everything is. <laughs> Jeff, thanks. I appreciate it. It's going to be a fun weekend. There's a lot of stuff going on including rookies for Steelers. We'll see Kenny Pickett. And then, of course, the big game six, and who knows, maybe a game seven on Sunday. Appreciate it, Jeff. See you, Bob. We'll see you guys here tomorrow. And stick around. We got the Steelers release show. It's coming up next right here on Pittsburgh CW.